exam 2024 question number one which one of the following is a non-parametric test let's take a look at the options okay so first is chi square second is t f z okay non-parametric tests do not assume a specific uh, distribution of the population like for example a normal distribution is not assumed for the population that's a non-parametric test these tests are useful when the data does not meet the assumptions required for the parametric tests like for example a normality so a few assumptions can be normality of uh, the population or distribution it can be homoscedasticity okay now from the given options, let's take a look at the first option. That's chi-square test. Now, chi-square is used for categorical data also sometimes. That is uh, testing goodness of fit. It does not require the population to follow a normal distribution. And hence, it is a non-parametric test. So, the answer is actually option A. Why B, C, D is not the option? Let's explain that as well. So, uh, the t-test is a parametric test used to compare the means of two samples, assuming that the population follows a normal distribution. So when I have a small sample, we usually use the t-test if I want to uh, uh, compare uh, the mean with a particular value. F-test is also a parametric test, uh, which is used to compare the variance of two population. Obviously, it will be requiring the normality and equality of uh, variances, then only will that happen. So testing the equality of uh, variances is uh, something that is done by the F test. Z test is the parametric test of a standard normal distribution. It's used for large sample uh, sizes, assuming that the population is normally distributed or the sample size is large enough for the central limit theorem to be applied in that case. So T, F and Z are parametric test. The only non-parametric test here is chi-square. So A is the answer. IIT Jam 2024, question number two. Let X and Y be two consumption bundles assumed to be non-negative and perfectly divisible. Further, the assumptions of completeness, transitivity, reflexivity, non-satiation, continuity, and strict convexity are satisfied. Then, which one of the following statement is not correct? Let's take a look at option A, B, C, D. Okay, so firstly, completeness is every pair of bundle can be compared. Transitivity is preferences are logically consistent. Uh, reflexivity is any bundle is as good as itself. Non-satiation is more is always preferred over less. Continuity is that preference changes smoothly without any abrupt shifts. Strict convexity, consumers prefer a mix of goods over extreme allocations. That is, averages are preferred over extremes. So the task that is given to us is to identify which one of the following option is not correct. So let's take a look at option A, B, C, and D. So option A, either X is uh, at least as good as Y or Y is at least as good as X or both. Okay, this follows from completeness. If the preferences are complete, then any pair of uh, bundle X and Y can be compared. Thus, at least one of the conditions from X at least as good as Y or Y at least as good as X or both, one of these has to hold. So option A is correct and hence not the answer. Okay. Option A is correct and hence not the answer. Now let's take a look at option B. Y is preferred over X if, if Y contains more of at least one good and no less of other good. Okay. This is also correct. This follows from the non-satiation assumption. If Y has more of at least one good and no less of any other good, it must be strictly preferred over X. Okay. So option B is also correct and hence not the answer. Okay. So option B is also not the answer. Option C, X is not indifferent to itself. It is indifferent to itself. This the statement contradicts reflexivity. Reflexivity is saying any bundle X is at least as good as itself. That, it, that implies that X is indifferent to itself. So this is the correct answer because this is an incorrect statement. So option C is the correct answer. Now let's take a look at option D. Why option D is also correct. For X or Y, it's better set is strictly convex. Okay. So why is D correct? Strict convexity is something that we have seen. Strict convexity implies that the consumers prefer a mix of goods over extreme points. 
right averages are preferred over extremes hence the set of bundles strictly preferred to a uh, to a given bundle of x or y will form a convex set because it is a strictly convex preference so convex set is that which will be preferred okay so option d is also correct and hence not the answer so answer is option c and that's that IIT Jam 2024 question number three. This is the production function. A is lying between zero and one. A not equal to 0.5 where Y is the output. L is the labor. What is the absolute value of elasticity of substitution? Now elasticity of substitution is nothing but percentage change in K by L divided by percentage change in MP L by MPK. Okay. It's also written as D log K by L by D log MP L by MPK. Okay. So let's find out what is my MPL here. MPL by MPK here. MPL is A by L. MPK is 1 minus A by K. So this can be written as A by 1 minus A into K by L. Okay. Now let's take this K by L as, for example, capital A and MPL by MPK as B. So I can write B is equal to A by 1 minus A into capital A. Now I need to find out D log A. So let's take logarithm. Log B is equal to log A by 1 minus A plus log A. Now D log B, if I differentiate throughout, this is a constant. It's zero, the derivative. And this is D log A. So what is my D log A? D log A by D log B is quite clearly equal to 1. Answer is A. That's it. So this is about solving the question. But you can also do this by recognizing the production function type. This production function is that of a Cobb Douglas logarithmic format. But since the expression involves logarithm terms, it resembles a log linear production function. And the elasticity of uh, substitution basically measures how easily capital and labor can be substituted for each other while maintaining the same level of output. That is the elasticity of substitution. So for this production function, which is Y is equal to A log L plus one minus A into log K. This is a special case where the elasticity of substitution will always be equal to one. This uh, result holds for Cobb Douglas like uh, functions with logarithm because they imply a constant elasticity of substitution. As I said, elasticity of uh, substitution uh, measures how easily K and L can be substituted for each other while maintaining the same level of output. Okay. So answer is one. I have also derived it for your own benefit. Okay. So that's that. So IIT Jam 2024, question four. Consider a closed economy with consumption function C is equal to 2 plus 0 0.5 Y, where Y is income. Government expenditure is 3 and investment function is I is equal to 4 minus 0 0.5 R. So we straight away first make the IS curve, which would be Y is equal to C plus I plus G. So Y is equal to C, which is 2 plus 0 0.5 Y plus I, which is 4 minus 0 0.5 R plus G. So we could uh, just straight away, the slope of the IS curve is dr by dy. Okay, so let's take all the y terms here. So this is 0 0.5 y is equal to 6 minus 0 0.5 r plus g. So 0 0.5 dy is equal to minus 0 0.5 dr. So 0 0.5 upon minus 0 0.5 is equal to dr by dy. So this implies dr by dy is equal to minus one, which seems to be our option D. So jam 2024, question number five, which of the following was announced in the union budget 2023-24 to enhance the skills of lakhs of youth in the next three years? It was Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana 4. Okay. This was introduced to further develop the skills amongst the youth. The version aims to align the training programs with the evolving industry needs and emerging job roles. Okay. Focusing on new age skills. 
तो ये स्किल इनहेंसमेंट के लिए दिस वाज लॉन्च्ड इन द यूनियन बजट ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर राइट